<laughs> Yay! We're back! Take two! <laughs> I, I, I made... Now we gotta split through all the topics. No, no. Well, we really only cared about a couple of them, so we'll just go over this. I make no effort to hide the fact that this hodgepodge is intentionally hodgepodge. I don't sit here and go, oh no, mistakes never happen here. It doesn't crash. No, we're on take two. You, for those of you who are, who are wondering why we're bored with some of this stuff, it's because we've already spent 20 minutes going over it, but we've lost that video. <laughs> it's because it's running on Windows. We even lost the video footage of me discovering how to do this. <laughs> oh yes, but we'll, we'll get to AT&T taking over your keyboard. <laughs> Ah, but moving on to, uh, you know, we should recover the uh, teacher versus Facebook, but not what you think. <laughs> well, it, uh, yeah, I mean, because we've already, okay, so we'll do, um, so you're not going to do Mozilla clipping plugins first? Uh, sure, sure, we can do that. Why not? Okay, before we get on to the Facebook insanity, um, you know, it, one of the things Mozilla is doing, uh, it's it's interesting, but it, basically they're, they're, um, disallowing or getting in the process of a position to go to the point that no, nah, this plugin is not going to be official anymore. It's going to be done. Basically, they're going to start any plugins they think aren't up to the standard. And I think this is this is a, I think this is a real mistake uh, because I mean the Mozilla plugins section. You know, when you go to Mozilla and you you get all these plugins, you know, there's ratings. And if the plugin makes your browser slow or doesn't work well with others, people say that. So it's not like people yeah. are it, it's not like people are entering into that blind and just saying no, it can't be there at all because it's not up to the Mozilla standard. I know where this is coming from. Mozilla is getting a reputation for being a slow browser or resource hog because people are putting some when you load it up excessively with plugins or load some plugins, the performance goes down. But to me, that's one of the real strengths of Firefox. It's utilitarian nature in all these plugins. It's the primary reason I'm still using Firefox over Chrome, e even even knowing those plugins might be what's slowing it down. I I don't think Mozilla's really thought this move out. It, it's um, I it, I know you use Chrome, Leo. What browser do you use a bit? We, you never actually answered. We I, I am really heavy Firefox actually. Okay, so yeah. I mean, I, I don't like the Opera or Chrome feel. I'll 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 use Chrome, um, or Chromium for you know just getting some basic browsing, or I need another browser. But uh, I'm very much a uh, a Firefox person because, and primarily because of the plugins. It, it there, there's. Well, just want to install any. I mean, I I've been using I use tons of plugin plugins. I mean, they're from anonymous browsing or uh, using SQL Lite. Uh, geez, there's all kinds of development tools, Firebug, all kinds of good stuff. No, no, yeah, there's plenty of good plugins. I, uh, if Firefox, if Mozilla gets a little too out of hand here and just going, oh, well, that decreases load time by too many milliseconds. We can't allow that. And and and, 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 and at some yeah, to the user for crying out yeah, at, at, at some. Oh, yeah. At some point here, what's going to happen is a plugin somebody's using is going to disappear from the Mozilla uh, "quote unquote" marketplace, and they're going to go, "Fine, I'm 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 switching browsers because that was why I was using it. I was using that plugin. That plugin's not there. Bye." <laughs> uh, they have they have not fought this out. <laughs> that's the bread and that's the bread and butter of Firefox and other Mozilla-based browsers. Yeah, I find, I find that interesting that um, you know they would go that route because uh, I, I agree that the plugins are a big strength and it should just be up to individual individual user. Um, that they're I, I, maybe they're, that plugins are happening. You know, people users tend to click quick, quick, quick. You know, they don't even pay attention. It's like, yeah, come on, come on. I just want to get to the to the page, and so they just don't even read some things. I mean, that's how uh, social engineering works so well. Uh, you know, malicious intent uh, programming uh, is allowed in 
edge by people's uh, laziness and, and apathy for computing and say, oh, yeah, get, get rid of this. Get well, no, and, and here's the thing. At the end of the day, the type of user who this would appease the ones who are complaining about this, they're not really Firefox users. They're users who want more the type of browsing experience Chrome's trying to provide, uh, which is a different type of browsing experience, this minimalistic, uh, things just aren't there browsing experience. Well, Firefox 4 looks pretty minimalistic. I uh, well, no, no, but I, 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 I think about how you do like simple things like... Um, Preview source code or pre, uh, print preview or other things like that. It, it yeah, you gotta get used to command keys is, is, is when I do stuff like that. If it's not where you're used to it in the UI implementation, I'm trying to get Wait, used what, to the keys. What, what's I'm different about the list. way that Firefox does source code and such? Uh, well, I, um, Firefox actually opens it in a whole other window, um, which can or cannot be annoying. Um, uh, w uh, however, you know, like, I, I have the actual old-style menus in Firefox, you know, I can go, fi uh, you know, let's go into that. Um, uh, on Chrome, how the, d I, I, I feel ashamed to say this, but I've never been able to figure out where print preview is. Print preview. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like, I go in there and I have print, <laughs> but I don't have a print preview. And there's many times I'm looking at a page that's like 50 pages long. I just want these two pages. And print preview, I go, click. Oh, okay, I want page 2 and 42. Okay, good. And I can never figure out how to... I, there's more often than not. I've opened up Firefox, gone to print preview in Firefox, and then gone back to Chrome, or I just print from Firefox. And it's like, it, it, th there's functions like this. I'm sure they're in there, but... They went for such a minimalistic... I, I have trouble finding them. And then there's the little things like if I'm running a different version of Flash intentionally, I have to say, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut, shut the fuck up, Google. <laughs> there's a reason I'm doing... What do you use the most? Firefox. It's like Firefox users want a utilitarian browser. They want the ability to have those plugins. That's the Firefox core user base. This, this, that was why I'm saying they're making a mistake here because this goes against the core user base of Firefox and the people it's appeasing, they're not really looking for Firefox anyways. They're looking for uh, one of the other browsers. You know? yeah, I, I love Firefox, man. I was a very early adopter for Firefox. Anything other than I, you know, back in the day, I hated Safari. I, I actually gave Safari a try. I just can't stand it. It seems I, to... I, I know I, I, I love Firefox, but honestly, all of the browsers are a thorn in my side because they all work just a little. Speed, but Opera also suffers the same rendering issues that it doesn't quite. I get all sometimes. Oh, this browser's not supported. I get pissed off about that because I, I do. Yeah, well, no, I, you know, it's like, and the reality is, every browser has that idiosyncrasy. There's some things Firefox, won't, the Mozilla engine won't do right. There's some things the Opera engine won't do right. There's some things the IE engine just does different. And there's some fixes you'll do that'll fix IE and it'll look okay in Firefox, but then it breaks it in Chrome. It's like, can I just do a patch that makes everybody happy? No, that would be too easy. <laughs> The reason you have to get paid the small bucks to fix web pages. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Um, m moving in. Uh, anything else you want to say it's about this? First versus Facebook, right? Yeah. It, I doubt we're going to go as off on this as we were. For, for those of you who are wondering, uh, unlike all the, if those of you who haven't heard, um, unlike all the other Facebook, what the effedness, this one actually makes sense. Uh, a teacher. A little girl decided she wanted Jolly Ranchers woven in her head because she liked that hairstyle from the magazine for picture day. And the teacher took a picture of her and posted it on Facebook and started making fun of the kid. And, it, of course, it got shared with all the teacher's friends. And the, the way the little girl found out about it was her mother was told by a friend who found out about it on the teacher's thing. But it Was the little girl told about, about it? Yeah, well, 
the little girl's mom found out about it from a friend of another kid. It's, it's, it's from a from a from a from a friend's parent. But the little girl does know about it. Yes, the little girl knows that her teacher took a picture of her on picture day and started making fun of her on the internet. <laughs> so it's like it. it ah. Yeah, we all say that the teacher is crazy, and I'm frightened by her social circles that she, she's in. Well, it's just you know, it's like I said when we were covering this before. These are the types of people, unfortunately, that we uh, reward to be gravitated towards teaching or supervisorial positions or police or other thing. You know, th there are a number of people in these positions that are there. I'm not sure I'd say they're the majority, but there is enough of them. They're there because they get their jollies off of being in charge of fucking with another person that can't say a damn thing about it. And that's obviously what one of the types of things like, oh, look at the dumb little kid. You <laughs> know, do we want to go over the Fox versus Time Warner again? Well, I don't just, know. Just Fox is you, you brought up a good point on the first go round. Is that uh, it's a cool thing if, if we can end up with an a la carte type thing if it were that direction. But the problem is, is that uh, our internet runs on these uh, cable companies' cables, and therefore they'll just cap us by not using their own streaming services, and so we're all stuck in the catch twenty two until. Uh, well, you know, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, part of me, even though I think Fox is being stupid as hell, is kind of hoping this draws attention to the old thing because if Fox won't let them stream it, or or, or it draws attention to this, then it's obvious to even the regulators that this is monopolistic stuff. This is deliberately trying to prevent open competition. That's the textbook definition of a monopoly. It's like my stream is better than your stream because it's my stream. My stream's free, your stream's bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> round and round we go, which brings us to what we actually hadn't got into yet, which is the reason I titled the episode, AT&T Wants Your Brain. <laughs> and that is AT&T's arrogance. And let's hope they're wrong, and let's hope we all keep making a stink about this for the next 6 to 18 months. And they're convinced that they can convince all of us that it's a good thing that AT&T gets one more step closer to being a monopoly so they don't have to compete with anyone else. Right. Ah! <laughs> they say it's in the best interest of everybody. You know, that's... <laughs> uh, so, so is Leo a T-Mobile subscriber? Because I have one question. Is there yeah. as many trapped calls on T-Mobile as there is on AT&T? Um, not in my area. Yeah, okay. he, he, he says no. I have had different experiences with T-Mobile. I, I, I have had oh dear God drop calls with T-Mobile in a lot of areas, but that's, uh, as a matter of fact, T-Mobile almost cost me to plow my car into a freeway thing at one point because I was trying to get, I was, I was following somebody and we had our speaker phones on so as we're driving around the highway they could say, okay, we're fixing a turn here and so on. And the T-Mobile call broke up so much that I wound up having to do one of these, okay, we're exiting here! <laughs> I've never had any problems like that with T-Mobile. Yeah, it's like where, it's where like, I am. I, I swear T-Mobile is the best all around. Well, no, it's the honestly. I'm going to say this is one of those things that's going to vary from area to area. In some areas, AT and T is going to be best. In some areas, Sprint's going to be best. In some areas, Verizon's going to be best. In some areas, T. Yet to be AT and T gets like no happens. coverage where I am. I'd love to see that. I have been in a few select areas where that is the case. <laughs> What's worse is having an iPhone on the AT&T network. Oh, no, no, no. We can't help iPhones. It's just the world to drop calls there. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the dropped call chart, you know, of uh, Verizon but iPhone 4 so versus... One, one posted by, here, I'll get it for you on Twitter. I'll post it for you, because you, you did bring that up. Um, yeah, because like, we, we need to do, like, this comparison, you know, because, like, same phone. iPhone versus iPhone. Is it the iPhone or is it AT&T? You know, it's like... <laughs> a little of this, a little of that. <laughs> 
some weird hodgepodge of the perfect drop call apparatus, you know. <laughs> uh, but no, it's like I honestly they got their work cut out for them. Uh, everybody needs to just be continuing hashtag. I kind of liked your idea we were talking about before the show, Leo. Of uh, all the freaking T-Mobile customers should be going to all their friends and trying to arrange protests at T-Mobile and AT&T stores. No, no, they don't merge. No, no. <laughs> I like that idea. It's like, because if enough people did that nationwide, <laughs> that would kill this merger. No matter what freaking spin AT&T puts on it, it's dead. And, and AT&T is already starting to put the internet to work for them. I'm already seeing what are obviously planted stories talking about how great this merger will be and how it'll fix things and how it's really a good thing to give over a third of all communication structures and in, uh, infrastructure in this country to be under one company and reduce 70% of the whole telecom industry to two companies. That's a good thing for everybody. No competition is American. It's great. Ma Bell needs to return. That's like... <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, what about this USA Today article that you found? How would you... So, it's not... I'm, I'm not totally uh, convinced. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I need to... I'm going to put it at the bottom of the sheet here. I'm going to paste in. Ironically enough, if you do go to... to uh, uh, if you go to Change Wave, that is the research company for it, and they have the ability to... Uh, basically see the report it costs if you, if you click on the link it's a you have to spend fifteen hundred dollars to see it <laughs> yeah i wish we had that budget <laughs> yes i too can spend fifteen hundred dollars and then and then, yeah, yeah, and then you get four reports per year which is five thousand dollars ah and then, of course, I can share that with all the viewers, right? So we can actually share. Or, or then we'll be in violation of the terms, and we're not actually allowed to exactly. read. Exactly. Well, this, they say. This is what they say. <laughs> the at and iPhone 4 owners, Verizon iPhone 4 owners, uh, the 4,068 respondents showed that 4.8% of at and iPhone 4 owners experienced a drop call on their um, iPhone over the past 90 days compared with 1.8% of Verizon subscribers. See that, but see, that's not the test I'm looking for. The test I'm state, looking for. Similar to industry-wide non-iPhone specific poll conducted separately by ChangeWay. In that poll, 4.6 percent of AT&T subscribers reported drop calls compared with 1.4 percent of Verizon customers. See, also served the, 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 the test I'm looking for is an entirely different test. The test I'm looking for is you go to one of these cities like Los Angeles or some or New York where they're complaining endlessly about iPhone drop calls, and you go there and you go to areas where you know your AT&T iPhone doesn't work, and you take your Verizon iPhone and you do an honest comparison. Which one works better? You know, you, know, you do side by side, you do full through, and then you do the actual lab experiments of clean room conditions. You, you do a head-to-head -head comparison. Is it the network? Is it the phone? Is it the technology? You actually do that test. The, a, a test... Yeah, I have an AT&T LG phone that does not drop calls. But my phone does. Oh, yeah, but it's just... Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, you were saying something about the article, Leo? <laughs> I'm sorry, your microphone's cutting out. I didn't hear that. You you were saying something about the USA article? <laughs> um, I, I was just wondering where exactly you would fit that, because they seemed kind of to be grilling what's his face, at and CEO, but at the same time, they seem to have completely missed the point. Uh, oh, okay. I think I know what you're on about, but better explain that. <laughs> Um, just basically, it keeps on talking about it as if the pro problem that T-Mobile users have with AT&T is signal. And when you're com combining the networks, that's absolutely not the problem. The problem is that AT&T has these data caps and other such well, things that uh, you don't want to pay for. Well, no, and the other thing is T-Mobile is one of the last bastions in the states of unmetered data. You know, it's exactly. it, they, they don't even nickel and dime you guys for tethering. It, it's you have that 
what is it, $80 unlimited, unlimited, unlimited plan. Unlimited text, unlimited minutes, unlimited data, unlimited tethering. Is that also true for Sprint? Uh, the Sprint one costs a different price, and we don't know if that's going to be around much longer. But <laughs> and, and Sprint charges you an extra fee to tether. So it, it's like the, T-Mobile's is actually better than Sprint. T-Mobile's is basically on par with something like you'd get out of Metro. And it's a little bit money, and unlike Metro, you don't have to buy roaming minutes because it's an actual cell phone plan. So I it, had me inclined to see if I could get an unlocked uh, uh, HP Pre 3 and try it on T-Mobile. Then, if it's still around. Oh uh, no! Let's see. Let's see. That's the thing. It's like um, I, if if AT and T buys T-Mobile, even if you have one of these plans, I don't see them lasting more than a year after the merger. Do you I, think it's gonna happen? I mean, what I it, 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 whether or not the AT&T T-Mobile merger happens or not is going to depend on uh, one very specific thing. Do people forget about it or not? Because pe people are all angry about it right now, but people have the shortest attention span in the world. And I guarantee you, end of May, you know, the news is not going to be talking about AT&T T-Mobile merger anymore. It's old news. We've covered it. They're going to move on. So it's going to come down to, do the average consumers keep making a stink about it to the fact that the shit is piled so high that there is no way for a federal regulator to approve this merger without creating a political shitstorm? Anything short of that, this merger will go through. Maybe eighteen will do something stupid again since it seems to be in their blood. Well, yeah, and at the end of the day, because it's like, the, the, the reality is the numbers here aren't bad enough without there being public outcry for it to really be a stink. This would only give AT&T a 39% ownership of the telecom industry. It would reduce over 70% ownership to AT&T and Verizon, and Sprint would not be long for this world after that. Uh, but AT&T wouldn't even have a 50% ownership. So they could argue, we're not a monopoly. We don't even own half. There, there is a case to make there. It's the screwing of the consumer and the prevention of competition along those lines, and that's going to come from public outcry. It's the moment public outcry dies down enough that they can actually get work done for six to eight months to push the merger through, it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I hope it doesn't. I really hope it does. And I, I, I would like to. I've never... T-Mobile's the only network I have not tried in the United States, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd like it to keep, keep around. I, I certainly don't like AT&T um, and the service that I've had here in Houston. Uh, I think, like, I, I have that one good LG phone, but, but the worst combination is, is just an iPhone on the AT&T network. I cannot tell you the misery that I had when I owned my iPhones on AT&T's network. It was just terrible. All right, then. And that's that's the one thing that that stands to be gained. The iPhone users would get a better network out of it. Yeah, along with their data caps. A little bit better network. And, and then all the T-Mobile customers could buy iPhones. <laughs> like I want to. <laughs> if I wanted an iPhone, I would have an iPhone. <laughs> hey, maybe we should pause it to save so we don't lose the... Uh, uh, okay, sure. We'll, we'll stop there, then we'll move on to Microsoft. <laughs> I just don't want us to lose. Uh, uh, okay, hang on.